Hey everyone, it's Professor Nagel. We're going to do exercise 2-1 from Murex C Sharp, 8th edition. So I just opened up Visual Studio. I'm making a new project. So I want to create a new project. And we have all these templates that we could be working from, and there's quite a bit. Um, but of course, we're using C Sharp. So let's choose that from the language. And now we have fewer options here. Um, we're building this for Windows and we're building a desktop project. And we're looking for the Windows Forms app. Again, we're in C Sharp. So Windows Forms app. Hit next. All right, we're going to call this invoice total. And pick where you want to save this. And we're going to place the solution and project in the same directory because our solution, which contains multiple projects, in this case, our solution only has one project. All right, on my machine, I only have .NET 8 installed. Um, so if you have seven installed, go ahead and use that. Uh, if you only have eight, go ahead and create with that. I'm gonna have to install seven on this machine, I believe. All right, here's our lovely form. And we need to um, create the form as seen in figure 2-5, which is page 43 of your book. So I need to see the toolbox. I did not have the toolbox on the side here, so I went to view toolbox. That became available to me. Um, and I'm going to pin the toolbox, hit this middle icon here. Um, that stops it from auto-hiding because I'm going to be using the toolbox quite a bit. And I'm going to add some labels to this. So I have a label here. And this label, I want to change some properties of it. So view properties window that will pop up down here. Instead of called label 1, this is going to be called subtotal. And I want the S in subtotal to be an access key. So ampersand subtotal. Just like that. And then I need three more um, text boxes. So there's multiple ways you can add elements, form elements to your form. Um, the way I like it to do it is drag it over. Oh, we don't want a text box. We want a label. <clears throat> drag it over. All right, so that's one way. This one's going to be called discount percent. The other way is you can click on the item once in the toolbar and then click on the form where you want it. All right, this one is going to be called discount amount. And lastly, you can double click, which I don't really like. That gives you the least amount of control. Uh, this is going to be called total. All right, we're going to line these up using the tools available to us here, just like that. Good enough for now. And then we need some text boxes. So here's a text box. And I actually need um, four of these. So take this one, copy, paste, 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 paste. Oops, I think I pasted too many times. That's OK. Just lining these up. Great. And then I need a couple of buttons. This button is going to be called Calculate, but the C is the access key. So ampersand calculate. And then I need another button. Put that next to it. This one's going to be called exit. But the X is the access key. So put an ampersand before that. And again, the access key, it underlines the that letter in the element. But also when you're using your form, if you hold down Alt, so if I hit Alt X, it would be the same as clicking on the exit button here. All right, I'm kind of surprised they don't make us make this a little bit larger, the uh, font size. So I'm going to click on the form itself, um, and I'm going to change the font. I'm going to hit the ellipsis here and change the font size to like 11. That makes it a little bit more usable. All right. Um, and I'd like these to be evenly spaced out. Might be jumping the gun here, but let's let's do that. I'm going to select these four elements. So I just drew a box around them. All right. And then I'm going to choose in the, I think this is the designer 
menu here, I want to set the vertical spacing equal. Yeah, and you didn't really see much of a change there. But look, let's say I do it like this, all right? The top two and the bottom two are really close. I'm going to set the vertical spacing equal, and now they're equal like that. And then as I drag these around, like subtotal, I want that pink to line up there. Discount percent, line up the pink, discount amount. All right, and the pink is the text in the box will line up with the text in my label here. All right, so I'm just uh, getting this to look good. I'm going to line up the exit button there, calculate. Great, then I'm going to take everything and just shove it up into the corner and then resize my form so it looks like that. Nice and tight. All right, if I had my form that looked like this and I ran the form, I would think there would be something over here that's supposed to be happening. But there's not, so... We make our form just like that. And we've done a lot of work, so control S to save it. All right. And then in, let's see, what is this? Figure 2-8, they give us a whole bunch of properties that we need to set. So we're going to do that right now. I clicked on the form itself. Um, the name is Form 1. That's fine. The text property. And, you know, if yours are sorted by uh, feature, it's a little bit easier to find things if you sort it alphabetically. So hit that second button there. And again, if you don't have the properties window, view properties window, second from the bottom, and that'll pop up. All right. So I want to set the text of the form to invoice total. And that changed what appears right here. The accept button, well, let's actually name these buttons first. I'm going to click on the calculate button and the name of this is going to be btn calculate so when you name buttons there they should be prefixed with btn all right and we're going to set the tab index of this to two and then the exit button we're going to prefix it with btn and then call it exit and that tab index, we're going to set to three. All right, back to our form itself. Um, we already set the text. We're going to set the accept button to BTN calculate. So if somebody fills out the form and hits enter, it's, it's just like they clicked on the calculate button. All right. And the opposite would be if they hit escape, it would be as if they clicked on the exit button. And finally, we want to set the start position of this instead of the default location center screen. All right. Um, and while we're at it, let's set maximize to false. All right. So I'm going to um, just double click on this. If you double click on a property that's Boolean, true, false, it'll switch it to the other thing. All right, you don't have to hit the drop down and then hit false. You can just double click it. Um, so this way, when we run our application, you can't make the window a whole lot bigger and screw up this lovely box that we put this form in. All right. Um, so here we have our labels. We don't have to worry about renaming our labels. Um, we'll leave them as is. Um, but we do have to set the tab index of this one because this has an access key to it. And if the user hit Alt S, it would be like they clicked on this. That would put their focus on the next um, text box according to tab index. So the label has a tab index of zero. The text box next to it has a tab index of one. All right. Um, let's see. Do we have to set the text align? Yeah, it's set to um top left right now and we're supposed to set them to middle left we're supposed to set all four of these so i can hold down shift as i click on these labels now i have all four selected and now i can take the text align and set it to middle left all right didn't really make a change there um these three text or sorry yep text boxes um the user is not going to be able to type into these. All right, so we're going to set them to read only. So I clicked on one, 
hold down control, click on the next, hold down control, or click on one, hold down shift, or just highlight them, all right? When you highlight them, make sure you're not grabbing too many things. And I set the read-only property to true. And then I'm also going to set the tab stop on this, on these three, to false. All right, so when we're hitting tab, we don't get, we can't get into these boxes. These boxes are going to be used for output only. Great, then I think we just set all the properties um, as it's shown in figure 2.8. And that was step 7. So step 8, press F5 to build and run the project. There it is. Um, it doesn't do anything, okay? But as I hit tab, my, current, my focus is up here. I hit tab again, my focus is here. You can see because that button has a highlight around it. I hit tab again, now I'm on exit. If I hold down Alt, you see that C, X, and S are underlined. If I hit Alt C, well, it doesn't do anything, but it's like clicking on the calculate button. Alt S puts my focus up here because the tab index of this label is zero. Um, you know, you can't focus on a label, so it moves the focus to the element with the next highest tab index. This tab index is zero. This one is one. Remember, zero, one, two, three. Great. Oh, and you cannot maximize this. All right. You can't make this form ugly because we've worked so hard to make it beautiful. All right, we actually did step nine, playing with our form like that. Um, step 10, if anything is incorrect, nope, we did everything correct. Um, fixed it, so I did that. All right, we're on to step 11. Click on the form so that it's selected and adjust the properties. All right, we already set the maximize to false. Um, we can set the minimize to false as well. Oh, and then undo that. Control-Z, undo, <clears throat> whatever. Click on the first text box and review the appearance. Uh, all right, so they're just having us do some things like take this. We can hit the plus before the font, and we can say bold. Great, now that's bolded, and undo. Listen, but when you're done, <clears throat> it should look like this, all right? A lot of this is just do and undo. All right, now we need to take this form and rename it. So in Visual Studio, there's always like two or three ways to do something. To rename this form, you can click on it and wait, and then you can start typing. You can right click on it and rename, or you can see right here, you can click on it and then F2, all right? So I'm a big fan of keyboard shortcuts. I'm gonna hit F2, and this is going to be called FRM invoice total. And the dialog comes up, click on yes, so that it updates all references. And whenever you make a big change like that, hit save. And now they're saying that we're basically done, we just need to exit out of this, but we made a change, all right? And whenever we make a change, um, obviously save, but then hit F5, run your program one more time and make sure it still works, all right? You don't wanna do all this work and then make a little change at the end, like renaming your form and then submit something that um, does not work, right? So just test one more time and now we can exit out. All right, so if you remember when I created my new um, project, I saved it on my OneDrive. Um, this is the fall 2024 semester. This is the first assignment that I have in here. So here's my solution. And remember, we put the project and solution in the same directory because we only have one project for this solution, all right? And these are all the files that make up the program that was created, all right? So when you go to submit your assignment, and this is primarily for my students, but maybe it's similar for others, Brightspace is gonna limit you to only be able to submit a zip file. So you cannot take the SLN file and submit it, okay? And even if you did, all the SLN file says is, hey, go look at the project files. And the project file says, hey, go grab all these other, you know, um, C-sharp files that 
put together, come together and make the project file for you. By the way, if you don't see these file extensions, view file name extensions, make sure that's turned on. All right. View file name extensions. You want that on so you can see your file name extensions. All right. So as your professor, or if I'm not your professor, I'm saying this for your professor, they don't want the SLN file or the project file or this one file. We want everything. All right. So we're going to go up a level to that invoice total, that form itself, or that directory that contains everything. All right. Now, not your directory that contains every single project for the semester, but you know, this one right here. All right. Which in hindsight, I probably should have named this like 2-1 invoice total, or even better, 2-1 invoice total Nagel. All right. I'll, I'll fix that for the next, next video I do. So we want to take this directory, right click on it, send to compressed zip folder. Now, this is what you are submitting invoice total dot zip. All right. And again, it would have been better if this were named like two dash one invoice total Nagel. All right. Because we're going to be, you know, the first like eight chapters of this book, we're working with invoice total. Um, and your professor, whether it's me or someone else, they're going to receive like 20 to 30 of these. Um, so having your name on it is even better. All right. So you can rename that upper level directory without breaking everything on the inside. Don't rename any of these things. If you do that, um, you'll end up breaking things. But now, 2-1 invoice total, send to compressed zip. This zip file is what you are submitting in Brightspace.